All right, Heist. This is, this is now my favorite. This is my favorite engine. Con. This is my Con. favorite. Why? 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 It's so pretty. Why? Uh, we got comments. Why? We both got the same comment. We we were talking about it. Apparently, Percy is wrong. There's a there's an engine on Thomas and Friends called Duck, which is more suited in name. Um, it is also it's a green got the, engine. the square tanks instead of the yeah, yeah different kind of tank, not a saddle tank. The side so, the okay. side whatever saddle tank thing. The, I don't know what these are. Side tanks. Yeah. Uh, would you like a you'd have to fill both over, individually, over, right? Sure. Like you'd have to. So on They're every steam engine I've ever heard of that they usually have a, a pipe that runs under, and actually this one, I just fell in and I can see the pipe because the collision model allowed me to fall in the boiler. Uh, there is the pipe. There's a transfer pipe right where I'm sitting right behind the, uh, the smokestack there underneath that you can look at to okay. connect the two. So you, you could fill one and it would fill both. Oh, it fill both. Okay, so that's nice. This engine, it's nice. It's a 280. Um, you know, it's... Yeah seemingly symmetrical is... we're going to be running backwards most of the way to get to the the location right so i don't know a heck of a lot about the deadwood central railroad which is where this engine's prototype actually came from but it's really neat and they they definitely must have used it in kind of end-to-end -end push pull type service oh it goes around the train. spicy fast oh, oh my god good. that's uh look at it go it's a speedy boy <laughs> it's so yeah. quick all right, yeah, well, that's, uh, we that's can get places, I guess. That's interesting. There's no we way we can pull cars that And uh, we're ready to nail deer and get more antlers for our headlights. Uh, yeah, with pilots on either end. So, uh, can you flick that switch when you go back past the... Right, right, right. Uh, so, it. obviously, yeah, we've here. got the un like ungodly smokestack on it. Uh, with the well, yeah, because, the... I mean, you might as well conged in. Like, why are you going to do anything else? Yeah, and uh, the other thing I noticed about this engine, which is kind of cool, is the, uh, well, not really cool at all, is that uh, we have a brake compressor, but we have no brake compressor. So... Uh, it's 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 in the cab. It's right here. Oh, it's, oh no, perfect. <laughs> that seems like a safe place for it. It's it's an interesting choice. That's the one thing that got me on this model. Um, I I don't know. That's the real the, life. It, that's the real life. I solution. assume. I assume so. I assume they did the research and figured that out. It doesn't make a lick of sense to me. I mean, the, the air pump is pretty violent. The amount of vibration that they have, uh, the amount they shake and they leak the <gasps> and everything. Oh, we do have a three time whistle though. That's that is. I can live with this now. Okay, I can put up with the green and the everything else. This, this is means great. Like I love this time. engine. It's we've got the leaky <laughs> smokestack, of course, a little bit, but well, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's fine. It's it's fine. But yeah, the the air compressor. I mean, it would be shaking you to bits having it this close to you, um, and it would not be a heck of a lot of fun. It, it would be quieter than you'd think. Because the air pump exhaust on full burning steam engines is actually plumbed through the cylinder saddle to the smokestack. So most of the noise of the air compressor actually ends up going up and out the stack. Uh, but it would be adding a fair bit of noise still in the cab. And then, yeah, I mean, air compressor packing almost always leaks. Uh, it would be, yeah, it would be an interesting thing to have so in the cab. I'm we honestly even, shocked. We didn't that's even really talk it. about it. Um, this is a 280. Um, what the heck is this thing? I don't even remember what it's called now. The Ruby Basin. Oh yeah, that's right. It's, I keep that wanting is, to think it was the, a 10 The name mile. of the the authentic engine from um, from the Deadwood Central Railroad itself. Yeah. Right. I mean, you'll notice here too. Um, we've also got a coaling tower set up now. We're gonna go up to the uh, the coal mine. We did a little bit of a rework of the industry there. We're gonna bring this up there, and uh, it's gonna the Ruby Basin's gonna live at the coal mine as our permanent coal mine running engine, as well as the pusher to help heavy loaded trains get out of the three percent and then right. our other train the um what is it our uh, our 280 there the the why am i Tweetsy. Yeah. yeah but anyway we're gonna bring these up we're gonna bring them up empty we're gonna fill them up with coal bring them back down full pump some stuff you know normal railroad logistics and, oh um uh, hang hold hang uh, on uh okay see so oh that is pinned <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's an Invisalink. It's um, that's a, it's a whole thing. Okay, yeah, that works. I'm assuming in real we'd have extra long links, I guess, to just right. The, the amount of custom links that were actually in use by railroads. There were step links. There were long links. All sorts of wacky stuff for any of the different heights and adjustments and whatever. Right. Uh, so yeah, we would have had a longer link for that. So so you know what uh, you know what I heard from last video from my what? comments, Con about. 
thinking of the switchback. You're good to come ahead, by the way. Uh, I heard a little birdie named Khan left the break on the climax. Oh, did I? He left the break on, and that's why we stopped so fast and we couldn't make it up the hill. <laughs> There's no way, because on my screen, I, I swear the brake lever was off, but like... It apparently was on. Everyone was commenting on my video saying that the brake was on when we tried it, so... Um, oh, well, maybe, maybe I was just trying to push you towards something? doing the switchback. I swear I pulled I guess it down. So. I must have... It must have snapped, like, the lever back up, and I just didn't notice. Yeah, sometimes the, the UI does that, and, like, that's I one of the really, like... like, there's no way I was dumb enough to leave the brake on the whole time we were driving. Like, that would... <laughs> right. That would be... That would be ridiculous. It would explain why you didn't burn out so hard, so... <laughs> it would. That would make sense, but, like, I, I could have sworn I put the brake down to zero, but anyway. This That's engine fine. is wonderful. Uh, any any is, other history uh, things about neat, it? It is a neat thing. I, I don't really know hardly anything about it. Um, it is the Ruby Basin. It is a 280T, so tank engine. Right. Uh, and it worked for the Deadwood Central Railroad, which was... I noticed I that say, the wheels in are South inside Dakota, all so. the mounting brackets yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's an outside-framed locomotive, which right. is actually a really neat design technique for usually commonly used on narrow-gauge engines. Um, it wasn't super uber common, but uh, narrow-gauge ended up having it more often than anything else because it allowed you to have a much bigger locomotive in a pretty small package still. Um, actually recently did a, a whole video explaining this because I remember when I was a kid and I saw pictures of the K36s and the K37s, like the one that I now work on, and it's like, it's got these like pizza cutter weird shaped slicey things on the other, where are the wheels? Like what? It's interesting, I noticed, yeah, our operating window is way wider than the ties in the track compared to... Right, so this is, this is a much wider locomotive and, and that's really what happens with outside framed engines. And when I say that they try to keep it in a small package, it's actually about center of mass. So on top of the frame, you can see the frame rails very clearly on the past the cranks and everything. You can see all those leaf springs and all those leaf springs are balanced and connected driver to driver in three different sections. So the locomotive is actually set up like a tripod. Right. But those leaf springs pivot and bounce up and down a significant amount. So they need a lot of clearance overhead. And if you were to have this be an inside frame locomotive, they would be hitting the boiler very, very quickly. And so you'd either have to have the boiler raised up higher or you'd have to have a smaller one. And so for the size of the boiler they had, they said, hey, you know, we can keep it low down and make sure we have a low center of mass for this three foot wide track, but we can still have this big boiler that can generate a lot of steam and make sure that we can generate a lot of power with this locomotive if we kick the frame on the outside rather than on the inside of the wheels. And then they slapped so, the tanks on the side just because they didn't want to have to have a tender is the idea? I, I guess so. Yeah, I, I don't know precisely why they needed a tank engine in this railroad and, and in the service. Presumably they couldn't turn their equipment judging by the double-ended pilot setup and everything. So run around the train and run like we are. Right, but uh, it's, it's a double-ended but... pilot, but it's still a 280. It's not a 282. So like... Right, so it still would track a little bit worse in reverse than Why forwards, wouldn't you just make but... it a 282 then? Like this, you know, that would... would that that be... is a question for the ages. And it also is a question for kind of the, the timeline because... Uh, Fireman, I need more coal. My fire's... Oh, oh hang on. My fire's on. burning down, 324, coal 10. In the hole. Coal, coal in, the in the hole. hole. There we go, yeah. Coal, yep, there we go. Perfect. I, my immersion. Sir. My immersion's there, man. Yeah. I wish I could beat you that over the head with the scoop. That would be funny. This so engine seems honestly. If, if we had a fireman and an engineer and a conductor in this engine, it feels like it, it would, would be, be very, very cozy. And and this is like this is a relatively large cab compared to a lot of them. Like a lot of the little engines that I deal with are deckless engines where the the boiler comes all the way to the back cab wall, and the fireman has to be out on the gangway. And uh, they still have the brakeman ride in there. And usually, like, on engines that didn't have seats, a lot of the engines, they just had a plank of wood that they'd run from the window to the boiler, and the brakeman would sit on that. So, what about, uh, like, if you're a yeah. porter? Like, there's no way they had three guys in a porter. Well, so, so you would have, uh, up in the, the head end of the train, you'd have engineer fireman and your head end brakeman back in the day of five-man crews. So yeah, the if conductor you have a porter, and then, like a, a, is an 040 porter, like that thing. Oh, those itty bitty engines. Yeah, I you thought can't you meant fit a porter like a passenger there, train unless, person. Unless like one dude's hanging off the back, you know, like it's. 
Yeah, that, that, those are itty bitty little choo choos. But I mean, that, those engines were not really used in road service. Those were like industrial engines, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of silly that they're in the, the in the game as a, a road engine anyway. But it's a cute little engine. I mean, we love it. We love Betsy, so I'm glad we have her. But yeah, uh, you wouldn't be taking that thing over the road with a five person crew, not at all. I just looked on the undercarriage. It Did is uh, two blind drivers in the middle. Oh, interesting. So okay. it's uh, front flange, blind blind, back flange. And the yep. timing for the valves comes off the third pair of drivers. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's so neat. that's something we've never really talked about. You only need your timing off one set of drivers, I would exactly. s which makes sense because they're all linked. What determines which driver they pick? Is it just... So usually it ends up being the main driver. And the main driver is the driver that the main rod connects on. There's oh, a lot of I cases. see. So since the the big rod hits the third wheel, that's the one that right. you put the... That's, okay. Because that's where all of your heaviest rotating stuff is going to be. They kind of put it in all one place. So it's like, okay, when you're doing the big heavy work, you're working on the main driver. You're ready to take care of everything that's associated with it rather than, you know, okay, well, we got some on this, some on that. There are definitely locomotives where they couldn't do that due to space. And right, the Porter, mechanical limitations and, then the Montezuma, and all that. Uh, the Porter and the Montezuma in the game are like that. The Montezuma's eccentrics are actually on the number one, and it has a backwards set of Stevenson valve gear that runs the wrong way. It still works just fine, but it actually has the links behind the eccentrics instead of ahead of them because they didn't have space because there's a firebox and everything. So it's a pretty wacky setup compared to something. But this is this is much more normal. This is a much more typical setup with the way that uh, the eccentrics and everything are down uh, down off the third axle there, the main axle. All right. So now we just got to load this bad boy up. Right. So I uh, we've, we've the coal we've industry got 340 is, coal. Yeah, we've got a lot of coal, which is good. Um, the coal industry is amazing yeah, now. Is I really like it. We've got four. Oh god, I'm stuck in the boiler. Hello. We've got four tracks, and they actually curve all the way around. It's cool with the new spline tree. You can keep tracks uh, spline tool, not tree, but you can keep tracks symmetrical through an entire corner, which is really cool. So these are actually four perfectly spaced cornered shunt lanes which is just something new it took a while to figure out but it's nice well you can't see it here but there's a huge lead track in that direction oh yeah so we but can that, fill this that, up radiuses look nice yeah we can literally fill this up and then just pull it all the way back down the lead and then bring it all the way up to the front and then uh hook it onto the back of this thing and then drag it all the way home with the tweetsies mm -hmm. You, uh, you just couldn't live with me having made the track at one of the industries. I no, it was, it was, I tried to just originally fix the back end where the switches was, because the back was just terrible to get, like, a, a helper engine around, and I'm like, if we're gonna have a helper here, like, we need to have some better logistics going on, and you had, like, that double switch set up, so you had to, like, go back and then S-bend over and then go back, it was just kind of annoying to do, you know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't set up with that in mind when and, I originally uh, built it. And then when I tried to fix it, just fix that one section, I realized that somehow you had laid track at two different heights. So, well, that's uh, that that sounds like something that I would be talented enough like to whole, achieve. Like the whole the whole there was a chunk of track that was just different heights from the rest of the track. So I was like, all right, whatever, we're just gonna fix all that. Uh, you can go ahead, one. Right. I was looking at your track. But yeah, I was just like, I don't understand how heist managed to do this. You had one at a different height from the rest, so I just relayed them all because that made my life easier. So what was the, what's, is there any, is there any logic behind whistle chimes? Is it just like flavor of the month? Like... Uh, railroads had different things. I mean, single notes were the easiest to make and the cheapest and whatever. So a lot of early locomotives had that. And then whistles okay. got more and more chimes and different flavors and things. And there were different companies that made whistles and railroads patterned their whistles of after other people is it like and, a and harley kind davidson of exhaust pipe like it's like oh you've got you're, you're right too far um is it like a harley davidson exhaust pipe you know where it's like you gotta have that specific manufacturer whistle you know to be like cool uh a little bit i mean everyone's got their own favorite whistle and everyone's got their own type right, like good. they're they're really neat and like there's a lot of different fun whistles that sound cool and different and three chimes and five chimes, six chimes, like all those different things. Uh, I like them all really. I, I don't really like the single notes as much um, just because I like the music of a corded whistle that has multiple notes in it. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's really just the flavor of what the railroad wanted, and, and early actually on it, that early in the day, it was what the You're engineer good? wanted because the engineer was assigned to his own engine on the early parts of the railroad, and a lot of times they would have their own whistle, like that was that engineer's whistle, and he put it on his engine, and you oh, knew it was his too because far. that was it. These cars are shorter than I think. Just keep going back. I'm not gonna leave cars in the foul of the switch, Con. Oh, are you keep going me? back. You want me to all go the all back. the way back with all the cars? Yeah, man. You bring them all We're the way out. Running the around? Lead. Yeah, man. This is this is logistics. This is smart design. We're we're not running around the cars. What are we doing? No, we're gonna hook these onto the back of that. Oh, we're, oh God, we're making one. Oh, oh. Yeah, we gotta oh. bring it all back. Oh God. I mean, our load's gonna be at the back, which is kind of bad for the old, That's you know, string lining. Vagina. Not ideal, but yeah. It'll be you fun. know, whatever. But anyway, yeah, you got tons of space. So you got a huge lead track here now. Which is oh God, sick. Connor, are you telling me that we're gonna run down the ten percent with? I mean, we like, could if you want to, but then we're gonna cars. leave that on the back if we're gonna do it. <laughs> it's either that. Well, it's faster to go down the switchback because we need to go back to the hump yard with all this, right? Is it faster? To, I mean, yeah, I guess you're you you have less distance to cover, but I don't know if it's faster. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't. But it's it's. I mean, we can take whatever you want. I assumed we were gonna do the switchback because then we can leave that engine here. <laughs> There's something strange about that five track. This is a like heavy, times, but this is a uh, heavy boy. Just, yeah, I can't see the uh, the coal hoppers on the train, so I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. It being heavy. Uh, yeah, no, it's just magically heavy for no reason. <laughs> I, we haven't done the math. We should. I mean, it's most only three percent. Right? the game is three percent. It should work, right? These are six, it's sixteen empties or something. Don't or 15 don't empties? leave. Don't leave the brake on uh, this time, and make sure you get steam pressure because you, your safety is no longer popping. So you don't. Yeah, have I don't have steam pressure. It's fine. You we're still have gonna, uh, we're 100 gonna... ish at yeah, 90. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's dropping fast. We're probably gonna burn out here. It's fine. We'll just halt on the grade and build pressure, as is tradition. Wouldn't? I mean, okay. I I guess like, if you didn't have steam pressure. And you were looking to go, you would you would just go for it and then just kind of deal with it as it is, or would you? Oh, you like if you run out of pressure, like you're almost always trying to. Run no, but I mean, if you're otherwise. like wait, if you're like ready to leave the get the station and you forgot to fire up for whatever reason and you don't have the steam pressure, you're gonna leave anyway, or you're gonna wait till your tr pressure builds. Oh, you. I mean, it depends. Like a lot of times, you you just have to go, and that's that, and then you just gotta catch up, which is awful. Uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> one of my one of my favorite uh, memories. That's fine. You got brakes, right? Uh, brakes are, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start tying some brakes. Just dragging us back. Just gonna tie some brakes. More brakes. More brakes. That's breaks. interesting. More brakes. Have we stopped yet? Yeah, we're stopped. Almost. More brakes. Okay. Build up your pressure and then we'll go. Yeah. So one of my favorite stupid moments was when we took the Rio Grande Southern number twenty down to the Cumbres and Toltec for a photo charter. And it was the first one we got to run. And so it was all exciting. My buddy Jeff was gonna run the train. My buddy Dusty was firing. Um, and we were super excited to get out there and do the thing on a real railroad. Cause you know, all of us have got a bunch of steam experience. Some of us had run at other places or fired at other places before, but as a group with our engine on a real railroad, it's like, oh, this is exciting. We're getting to go run it out on the main, you know, 64 mile long railroad instead of our circle. And uh, so we got told that like, oh yeah, we're gonna do a quick like final last minute uh, like brief before we go. Um, and then the conductor just gave us a highball while me and Brett are standing next to the engine, like just waiting for uh, the conversation between whoever. Conductor gave us the highball and it's like, yeah, it's time to go, like leave. And the pilot for the, the crew wasn't even on the engine. So he ran over, got on the engine. They took off and Brett and I are like running back to the caboose to get on the end of this 14 long car long freight train so that we can get left behind. But poor Dusty was like, oh yeah, well, we'll have a little briefing and then I'll have a couple minutes to fix my fire. I just fell off the trestle. It's fine. Uh, you know, he was not ready at all. And so they took off. And I mean, he went from 100 PSI boiler pressure, 180 to like 160 in the span of a couple of seconds. And then, you know, you're running out of town, you're pulling a train, like it, it's flat railroad for the first part, but you know, you're working the engine, man. So you're going fast, you're using steam. Like he's trying his hardest to catch up and he did. Dusty's a great fireman. So he's able to, to deal with it. But like, that is your worst nightmare as a fireman is you're looking in there, you're, you got 180 PSI on the gauge, you're ready to rock and roll. 
but your fire looks like crap because your fire's been sitting, you know, and, and you didn't have any draft because you're trying not to pop while you're sitting in the station. And so your fire looks like junk and he starts working on it and your fire looks worse. And it's like, you're throwing coal in there like mad, but not too much and trying not to slug it, make sure it's actually getting to start burning and everything. And it's like, just a disaster as a fireman. So you hate having that happen. It happened to me too, getting out of town. I thought my fire was good enough and it uh, it wasn't. And I fell behind and then had to catch up. And then we did a bunch of photo run bys at the first trestle. It was five miles out of town. And uh, everyone got treated to the safety symphony of the safety valve popping every 30 seconds because I was very ready to generate steam at that point. And then they, we stopped for more run bys than they told me we were going to. So How it's do like, you guys okay. decide who's going to be like fireman and conductor and stuff? Do you have like a, do you just like, you know, rock, paper, scissors at it or do you schedule it? I mean, it? So, so sometimes literally at the museum. Yeah. At the Coombe Race and Toltec, it was a different thing. I kicked all the brakes off if you want to try and pull it now that you got steam. Okay. Um, at the museum, sometimes it literally is as simple as rock, paper, scissors because it's like, I don't know, you want to take it? I don't know. You want to take it? Just going around we can, the circle. We whatever, actually but. can pull this. Like we have the look. Like, we have the momentum. We just like oh, you're we, just barely. Just, like with sand, I'm barely moving, but it, it just need the moment. Like we'd be dead centered for sure. Oh, for sure. So, so like wanna, I think I could just go back it. to yeah, a little bit of flat and, and then. Okay, we could do that too. The interesting thing about this engine, which I never noticed until now, is that if you look at the drivers, right? Right. They're, first of all, they're relatively small drivers considering the size of the locomotive. Yes. Uh, if you look at like the old standard gauge engines, they have these massive drivers that go like ha halfway up the boiler. Um, you know, like well, we, they, want, we want tractive effort cons, so small yeah, drivers. Yeah, which makes sense. Smaller drivers, more tractive. But like the first pair, the first driver, is like an inch from the second driver, and then there's a huge gap between the rest. Right. The wheel spacing. If you look at these older 280s, the wheel spacing on them is very strange. On it's a just, lot of these It's just like mechanically where they had the space to fit the stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's all about clearance between you and the cylinder, the pivoting points, enough space for the suspension, uh, trying to distribute the weight. Like, there's all sorts of weird little things. Some of them are pretty even. Like, this one's actually relatively even between the last three, but some of them are wacky. 346, our engine, she's got pretty wacky spacing. The number two and the number three with brand new tires are less than your thumbs width apart between the two wheels super 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 close uh her tires are absolutely like between the flanges down, of them that or are they blind they're 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 blind but uh i mean yeah so between the actual tread surfaces so they're blind uh it's kind of amazing i'm getting immense pleasure from the fact that we're getting individual chuffs working hard right now yeah, I'm surprised we're still moving, to be honest. I feel like we're going to stall out here. We are completely on the grade, though. But this is why we have that pusher. Right. We, um, might, uh, we might need I might need to go get it. But. Yeah, we might actually have to push it. That's the point of it. You are slowly slowing down, so we might yeah. just be a smidge over tonnage. Yeah, I'm going to go get the pusher. Let me we might actually back to the coal mine. Yeah, we're not, we're not moving anymore. We're, like, almost right at tonnage, to be honest. Gently now, gently. Dunk! All right, yeah, I can feel you. Holy cow, dude. The tractive effort that you add to this situation is immense. Like, we are, we're just yeah. flying now. Big, big choo-choos. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, this is a chunk of a tank engine, man. It, it, it is a serious locomotive. It's it kind of, cool. it kind of feels like it's the ultimate yard engine, to be honest. Like, if you had yards in this game with just a bunch of those, you could do any sort of logistical management. Right. Up hills, whatever you want. I still think the Shea is going to be the hump engine. I'm sorry to say it, but the uh, Shea. And it's going to be called, like, the sad little humper or something, you know? But, like, it just it just feels like gonna, we, somebody, we have to have a Shea at some point. We can't them. not like, have a Shea. We need a whole consist of many Shays. Yeah, well, that's fine. We can have two Shays humping. You know, what does he do? That'll be enough. Hump, humpty and Dumpty. Yeah, Humpty and Dumpty. There you are. Two shays, Humpty <laughs> and Dumpty. And then we need to throw them off of a cliff. Yes. Hey, man, whatever you want to do. All right. This uh, feels like you're going oh, pretty I'm fast going now. Oh, I'm going spicy so, feet, speed. Yeah, uh, you can... I'm, I'm just going to shut the reg off and walk away. Yeah. If I can get on. Oh, oh, oh. oh I can oh, slow bye. down. I'll slow down. Oh, yeah, if you just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Is this flat through here? 
Uh, it's, right it here. flattens out a little bit, and then it goes down. Now I'm over the switch where it goes down, so I should be fine no matter what. Okay, yeah. I, I'm just wondering for Duck, because Duck is still chasing me. Uh, it should eventually, like, it's still, it's still all the way up to the switch. It's slow. It's sloped. It's just, like, okay, less than... so the switch is where it flattens out. So then yeah, it'll... it's just less than it'll 3%. Stop. It'll roll back to the coal mine. It'll be fine. Might be a long route with lots and lots of track, but it is wicked cool how easy it is to run these switchbacks. Now, mind you, if we didn't have the auto yeah. switching, I probably would never want to do this. Right, yeah. Auto switching makes this a lot nicer than it really is. Yeah. You'd have to stop with each move and realign switches and yeah, the whole thing. But the the two percent tails, like that, was a great suggestion by viewers. I mean, that uh, that really makes this just seamless. I mean, you just let it roll. Yeah, exactly. And you're you're somewhere up ahead. I can see five of the fifteen flats from back here on the the tail of the last car. You know what I say we do with this train, just for the lulls. What? Because we we did put a coal thing at our coal, uh, coal fill up station at the at the yard or whatever, right? At the roundhouse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but good. I can talk well. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It happens. Yeah, but what I think we should do is we should just take this train and hump it with the full coal cars into the hump yard. And humping the loads. All right. Just just leave them did there for derail? now. Did you derail? Did you derail or is this client side? Oh no, we did. We lost a car in the middle. There's what? two. There's two that are just there. <laughs> just, I'm just on the back of the train. Oh, And then my... there's just two cars in the dirt. <laughs> What'd you do, Con? And then they shove the rat. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Oh. What's going on up there? Are you are you all over everywhere up there? Oh, my God. They just... They, like, that how does the, that uh, even happen? The the mildest Kenosha yet. Like, oh, literally. Oh, God. I, Why, I literally... Like, how did the two in the middle derail? We weren't even doing anything. <laughs> oh, God. I literally am just sitting Are there, they make it there past watching the scenery go Are by, and it's it... like, flat car? Are they going to clear flat the switch? Car? Did they clear the switch? Uh, no, they have not cleared. The, I re-railed the two cars that derailed, and I'm letting them roll. Um, and you appear to be clear of the switch, I think. Uh, yeah, they, the rest of the train came in and, and bonked into the tender. We lost the tender. Oh, God. Uh, where, where is the I, rest of the train, Con? Down the mountain to the left. You I don't even know it's... how that happens. Like, I had to say we have momentum with the coal cars, but remember when we did this last time? We brought all the coal cars, and we thought, you know, 2% coal cars, does it, like, it worked with that? Could we do it with infinite number of coal cars? This is a oh bunch of... Oh, my God. Yeah, this is a this bunch is... of lighter cars, and somehow they derailed. So, like, what does that tell you? Oh, my goodness. And there's a tender. Is the engine still on? Yeah, the engine's still on. But everything else where, here is just... Where, where's the engine? <laughs> it's way up ahead of the lead. I, I kept driving a little bit because I didn't want to get... Oh, yeah. Put you the didn't want to get pummeled. Yeah, okay. Wow. Well, well um, we're going to rerail this mess, and uh, we'll be right back. Yeah. Look at this. We're at, we're at the bottom of the switch. Yeah, no, it was great. It, it definitely didn't take Dude, any we, time uh, at all to reroll all yeah. this stuff. Um, we should have gone down the 10%. Because, yeah, I know, yeah, that was, right? Uh, we, no, yeah. you know what we need? We just need we need to make just a, a dead man's plank at the top of the switchback. You just drive the whole train off it and then rerail it at the bottom and keep on with your day. Because that, that it would have been, been just as faster. fast as what we did, you know? Yeah. Like, we basically yeah. rerailed the whole train. <laughs> I'm trying to platformer my way across the train, and the client desync is making it a challenge, but it's fine. We're there. Yeah. So there, there's stories on the railroad. Plenty of client of desync like, and the guy missing his desync. jump. Yeah, and the guy getting stuck in the coal hopper. He you know, missed his jump try. between cars and, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, there's stories of the, the rear end crew not knowing what happened and going up to the front of the train to figure out what happened. Like, And then the front's just gone. <laughs> No, dude, that actually happened once. There is a, there's a story on the Rio Grande where the, the train came to a stop. The brake pipe went to zero. They saw that in the gauges of the caboose. It was before the time when they have radios. They had no way to contact the head end. So they walk up to the head end and they go, you know, in front of the train, tender. And then there was wheels and a cylinder saddle and the boiler was gone. The engine crew blew up the engine. Wow. They let it run out of water, blew up the engine. They both died. And the boiler got sent like 300 yards, space. Of, you know, into space. Yeah. And they're they're sat still on the rails with a dent. I mean, the amount of force they actually dented the rail, but still on the rails, wheels, frame, 
cylinders, and but then, the boiler and, and the smoke box and cap man, was just like... gone. I don't know what you do. I, I'm pretty sure you utter a bunch of four-letter words, uh, realize that your friends have been killed, and, uh, and you, you, yeah, nothing I mean, happened, I, I you imagine know? you just quit the railroad, and you just go walk into the woods somewhere nearby and make a shack and live off the land for the rest of your yeah, life, just, and just we're not... We're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not acknowledge the railroad yeah, anymore. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's one of those things like, oh yeah, what happened? Well, okay, it's fine. There was another engine on the Grand that blew up, and it was an articulated. And the funny thing is, the the boiler like yeeted into the stratosphere. Uh, cab disappeared and everything. Same kind of thing where the rear driver set stayed coupled to the tender and everything through the drawbar, derailed itself uh, from the force. But the lead engine of articulated, the front engine unit, just kept on putting like it was fine. Just kept going. And it went down like a half mile down track or something. Someone's gonna crack me the actual distance in the comments, but like. It was an actual thing, one of the big articulateds that blew so, up. So speaking like, oh, yeah, of double engines, engine kept going. I looked up after our last video, I looked up Fairleys and double yeah. Fairleys, and there were two types of Fairleys. There was a single Fairley and single double Fairley. Single Fairley and the double Fairley. And the yeah. double Fairley had two boilers, two sets of drive gear, two fireboxes. It was completely double. Right, except it's one singular boiler. There was no back head. Yeah. No, it was two boilers, they said. And it's one boiler that is conjoined, two fireboxes, but the boilers share water. I, I'm i telling you, this said it was two separate separate boilers. That's not what I got told. That's not the diagrams I've seen. Now we're gonna have to research this. I'm gonna look, comments, I'm gonna look up right now up. while you go you go line switches to the double fairly. I was looking this up and I was like, I just didn't know. The fairly locomotive built by Burma, or for Burma railways by the Vulcan foundry it had two boilers apparently. Oh, interesting. Okay, so maybe one, like maybe the, the ones that I've heard of were a single boiler um, on the actual, um, I think it's on the Festiniog or the Talithlin. See, I don't know. I don't know. I don't maybe remember. someone in the comments is going to have like a whole fairly history and they're going to know Some, all, somebody, somebody knows. I'm all sure the details they about it. But that's what I was reading. And I was like, this is a very weird looking engine. And you'd stand in the middle and you'd shovel into two directions. And yeah, would... so the, the ones on, I think it's the Talithlin, um, there's two fire doors on the side of the boiler. And so you'd be firing from the side, from the fireman's side. It's super weird. Like, I can't even imagine what that's like. I would love to go out there and go see those engines in person because they're wacky. Uh, yeah, yeah, very neat. All right, you're lined to the hump now. That's good. You might want to start cutting cars then once uh, I roll past you. Right, I'm going to line us up for the first set because we got stakes, and then we got hoppers, then we got stakes. And, and you got like full actually... hoppers. You got to hump heavy cars, bro. Go ahead and bring them back. Did you break your sections? I did. That's uh, that's my favorite radio call. Go ahead and bring them back. I get that one, and I just blow a single whistle and wait for them to figure it out. Make sure you pin the stake flat sections together once they, uh, you know. Oh, that'd be that'd be pretty high speed. Break the first one, and I'll stop once the first one comes in, so you have a chance to break it and run back to the hump and. Like I won't, right. I'll hump the first section and, and leave the hoppers still on the hump, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get you. You you can see, so I don't need yeah, to tell I you that, Yeah, I can see. Because right? I can't see it. You're, you're I'm being shoved by some invisible force. Use the force, Luke. Hump the train. The key here, though, is if I stop, the cars still move with momentum. So that's all the yes. momentum I've yeah. given them. Yeah, we'll see. It's, we're, we're about to hit the 10% with the first cut here. Yeah, it should it should make it, as long as the hoppers don't accidentally keep pushing. You're good. I think that first section is gonna hump here. I'm pull. Yeah, I'm pulling away already. Yeah, but then the hoppers are gonna stop. Perfect. Can we can we insert a roller coaster tycoon, uh, screaming sound effect as I go down? Oh my god! Right. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you go over a ten percent grade? Just that. That'd be great. All right, I'm just holding these on the hump. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. I mean, feel free and kick them. I got a well, little, little break going on here. I'm, you're lined in already onto the other track, so. Oh, the hoppers are already lined in? Okay. Yeah, you're you're going to have to break in, so them, just... though, like, right away. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll catch them. It'll be fine. Because the first one, it's going to have momentum because they're full. It's the first time we're actually humping cargo, you know? It'll be it'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. I feel like hopper cars would have a do not hump sign on them. I feel like they'd be part of the humping not allowed. I don't think, I don't think you would hump loaded hoppers just because... They're heavy. That feels like that feels like the way to send coal everywhere. Like, yeah, that was kind of my thought as well. But 
I don't know. And, and I guess, Cole, I mean, Cole's unit train stuff, so you wouldn't even be humping unit trains. All right, I'm on the first hopper and it's going over the hump, so. I don't know if this is actually, is it about to clear the it's, hump? It's, it's, they're trying to drag. Like, that's the funny thing is it's still dragging six loads up. Okay, now, now we've got enough potential energy. I think it's gonna, it's, it's so slow. Yeah, it'll pick up speed because it's still pulling <laughs> it's, stuff yeah. up, right? Like, and then once right. it clears once, it, once then it it's just gonna go. Stuff up. Yeah, then it's it like takes a, off it's like, like a rocket. Like the last drop on. Uh, oh, good God! There I it goes. The wrong switch. It's fine. Well, whatever. Got it. Got it. So it's fine. It's going. It was lane. gonna line them into the same same exact lane. All right. Well, these are braked, pinned, humped. Perfect. Got uh, got all these cars in this hump. This is a pretty happening yard, man. This is great. What are cars are we missing? We've got our log cars. Oh, they're way oh, at the end. Everything's here. Everything's here. The log cars are way at the end. Yeah. Yeah, and then we've got full full hoppers of copper or no, not copper. Full hoppers of coal. My goodness, we got man. we got copper hars again with uh, with con. Yeah, honestly. Ga gone caming. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And we got the crap the crap uh, box cars. It's nice. I love those. I am interested to see how this uh, actually works out with this tipple because it says that it's got 120 coal available uh on the shoot side but then right. on the dump side it says that you can only load 20. well unfortunately so. i think everyone's just gonna have to wait till next episode and we can do a uh, let's do some logistics you know some railroad yeah. logistics we'll get distribute some... the firewood distribute yeah the we'll coal, get some man. logs and go fill up all our firewood depots we've got all over the railroad we'll get some coal delivery you know we'll see what happens you know and, and make it make all the the, I don't even know maintenance of weight. Well, no, you say it would be B and B guys, right? Bridge guys. So bridge and building, like I mean, it, de it depends. I mean, if it, the MOW, it would be like a, just a job on the railroad to like bring the stuff there. Like yeah. it'd just be a switch job, and then you know it'd be B and B's responsibility to actually make it happen. But well, yeah. since we're all into acronyms on the railroad, we got to get uh, make sure everyone L and S's, and uh, you know. Yeah, uh, LNS hits that and, and T, see the B T U yeah. button see. and uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah. Exactly. And then we'll T T Y L after we, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna... After we G two G man. Yeah, G two G. Exactly. I, I, once, yeah, no. <laughs> I once used AM Messenger. Yeah, I was there, Gandalf, <laughs> three thousand years ago. No, I'm gonna go. I'm Thanks gonna go so to the coal mine folks. and look at our wonderful new engine again because it's just my favorite. Oh yeah, engine. is it? We need. Where, where, where did that end up? I don't know. I feel like it's here somewhere, right? Is it? Probably. Probably. Yeah, it's here. It's way at the end of the lead. Oh, wow. It's all the way at the end. Well, right. hey, it's ready for next time. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.